Hello and welcome, Caleb from uh, Beartooth. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, where are you right now? I'm in uh, a warehouse in Berlin, Germany, where we are rehearsing for our tour. Come ah. out with you. How is it going? Very good. Um, you know, we're all still fighting the jet lag as we always do, but um, I don't know. It's just good to be back in the saddle. Good to be playing again. Uh, this is just one of my absolute favorite things to do in the world. So to be able to just make loud noise with my friends makes me very happy. So I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, the first show is uh, in two days, right? Mm -hmm. in, in Berlin, right? Mm -hmm. Ah, nice. Okay, so um, Germany, what are you expecting here? <laughs> my goodness. I mean, it's no secret that Germany is... Beartooth's favorite place to play shows, at least crowd-wise. I mean, we've been pretty open about that for many years now. Uh, and that's not for no reason. Uh, the Germany is its something else. It's almost indescribable how supportive and energetic and excited the crowds are. Um, it just is a, I don't know, it feels like some sort of spiritual experience. It's truly crazy. So... Um, I have no idea what to expect. I never do. But I I have a feeling they'll be pretty wild. Yeah, because many shows are sold out. Um, do you have special plans for, for the show? For the shows? No. I mean, you know, we, we put a lot of time into the set list. Um, you know, thankfully, with things going well, we're doing two nights at a lot of venues. And we have two different um, shows that we're doing, two different set lists, which is new for us. Which is very exciting because, um, you know, as we've kind of grown as a band, we've had to figure out the right amount of length for a Beartooth show because it is just nonstop pummeling you in the face with energy. Yeah. So, you know, if we're up there for two hours, it gets a little, gets to be a little much. So, um, you know. Too much it's to nice both to shows do, or? <laughs> uh, it's nice to be able to do two different shows that are going to be, uh, you know, different. And we get to play a lot of different songs. But still, it's, I don't know. I, I just can't wait. They're my favorite Beartooth set lists and shows in general that we've ever done as a band. And we're very happy about it. And looking forward to a special song to play on stage this tour? I mean, definitely. You know, I've... More than anything, I'm excited to play our latest single, Attention. Uh, this is the first time that we've ever played it as a band. Um, I mean, you know, it just came out a couple of weeks ago. But we literally played it yesterday for the first time, like all together. I mean, obviously, we all, you know, practice it at home a million times by ourselves. But then to finally get together and play it, it just felt really good. So uh, I cannot wait to play that live. It's going to be very exciting. Yeah, how did it come that you uh, added that song to the uh, deluxe version of The Surface? And why just one song? <laughs> Where's the yeah. other 55 uh, songs? <laughs> well, that's that was actually a very intentional thing. So, you know, usually with deluxes, you get... Obviously, there's your live versions and your alternate versions and things, which we, which we have. But then usually you just get the B-sides, which are the junk songs that weren't good enough to be on the album. And, you know, when I was thinking about it and talking with kind of the label about it, I had a pretty strong opinion that I don't want to do that. Like, there's a reason those songs didn't go on the record. It's because they just weren't good enough, period. They didn't meet the criteria in my mind and through my filter. So what I said is, give me time and let me make an entire new real single that is current. And that is about what's going on in my life right now. Because really, that's what a Beartooth song truly is, is me talking about what's going on right at that moment in time and, and capturing that through a song. So I kind of disappeared and I, I spent a long time making this song and, and working on it. And there's a lot of love and there's a lot of deeper meaning <laughs> to this song. And, you know, there's so much history involved in it. And um, yeah, it it was more important for me to put all of my energy into a song that I really care about and that I feel like is worth people's time than to just give them the bullshit. Is it, like, 
Is it like more the, the top of the iceberg from the album, the surface, or does it stand alone in kind of its way? Uh, it really is like the finishing of the surface. It, it's meant to signify the ending of that period of time um, in my life. And, and that album as a whole, you know, that album campaign started with the song Riptide as a standalone single, you know, two years ago or two and a half years ago, a long time now. And that song was a big statement. It was a big showing of the fact that I am personally going through a lot of changes as a human being and as a musician and as, as a songwriter and as a performer and all of that. And um, attention is kind of really signifying that I am just content with where I'm at in my choices and in my life and um, that I'm, I'm just ready for what is next, you know? And I, I think there are a lot of very big things up next and a lot of very important decisions that I have to make. And um, so I don't know. I, To me, this attention is about the present and moving into the future while capping off this amazing two years of my life that signified probably the biggest changes that I've personally ever gone through as a human being. And um, yeah, so that was kind of like the whole, the reason that I wanted to do something new and, and spend time on it to kind of put a bow on the surface, you know? Okay, when... When when the song is the bow of that whole the surface area, I just call it like that. Um, mm -hmm. What do you tell the people what's coming next? Because there were also fans who really were not into the surface and that happy thing and more of the heavy songs from below and such on. Um, is there something coming from the past right now to the future or what's the plan? I have no idea, to be completely honest with you. Um, I mean, I think that it's a little more complicated than just, you know, we like the heavy stuff, play the heavy stuff. It's like, I am a human being that has grown and evolved. And I, I still love heavy metal. I still love, but I also still love pop music. And, um, you know, candidly, I think a lot of, songs that I've written back in, you know, however long ago, um, as much as they were genuine, they were written through the lens of a lot of fear and a lot of um, self-deprecation and a lot of, I don't know, insecurity, you know? And, and I think another big part of attention is me kind of making a statement to people that I really am not being driven by insecurity anymore. And I'm not driven by, you know, things that I used to do. Um, and that's why I chose to make the last song of this thing the most pop, the most, you know, I'm using synthesizers and like, Lord. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I, I, I've never, things I've never really done so much in Bear Tooth, things that I literally told myself 10 years ago I would never do. Uh, because I was ashamed of who I was and I was ashamed of the things I liked. And, you know, I was in a band prior called Attack Attack that was a very polarizing band to a lot of people. A lot of people hated it. And, um, you know, I think I, I was very young and I was very embarrassed at the end of it. And, and I like shied away from all these parts of my life that I really enjoyed playing piano, playing synthesizers, making electronic music. And I just leaned into this heavy stuff because it was, I was angry and that's what felt right at the time. But, you know, I'm, I'm not 19 anymore. I'm 31 and I've gone through a lot of life. And I think to those who really care about following the whole story, uh, attention probably will make sense if you, if you really understand what's going on. And it also doesn't mean that I'm never making heavy music again. Not at all. But it was very important for me to make the statement that I am secure with who I am and I am secure with who I used to be now. And that does mean the heavy stuff as well. It's like, but that also includes synth and that also includes pop music and that includes me not 
being swayed by people's opinion in my artistic expression. Um, I think at the core, if you look at any good artist or any good, really just, I mean, if we'll, we're talking about Beartooth, Beartooth song, all the good songs are the songs that at the core were me explaining exactly what I was feeling and what I was going through um, in the most honest way possible. And not and trying time just yeah. right now, yeah. Just, yeah, and and not trying to write songs from a place of what does everybody else want me to make or what do I think people want me to make? Because that's not going to be authentic. And people can see that from a mile away. It's like the more that I ignore what other people tell me they want, and I just trust my heart and I trust my compass that's when the real stuff happens. And then in turn, those are always the songs that people like the most because they can tell that I was being honest. Because no, I think a lot of people underestimate the listener and, and the intelligence of a fan base. And they try to manufacture these big radio songs or these, you know, all of a sudden we're going to go mainstream and we're going to do this. But like listeners are so much smarter than that. They can tell when you care about what you're saying and if it matters to you. So yeah, you know, that in short, that is uh, really what's at the forefront of my mind is I just want to make songs that are honest to me because the more honest they are to me, the more honest they are to our fan base. And I think our fan base has earned that and deserves that. And if I try to write them some bullshit, it's just going to be bullshit and nobody wants that. That's a good statement. <laughs> okay, um, there's, there were a lot of, things into it. I just wrote questions, but I skipped them. Yeah, I tend to <laughs> ramble. My apologies. Oh, no problem. Um, I just have a question I that came up to my mind today um, yeah. because I, I watched a lot of videos from the last um, um, yeah, concerts and so on, and you always have bananas on uh, your head, but mm -hmm. how many bananas do you really actually own? And how yeah. many do you have to carry for the tour with you? Uh, do I actually own? My goodness, I don't know. A lot. A lot. Because um, I've had so many different ones over the years. Um, but I believe I only have three with me on this tour. Oh. I always bring a backup. Uh, but I usually, for every tour, there's one specific one that I wear for the whole tour. And that changes tour to tour, but I usually try to wear the same one every show. Uh, but, you know, things happen. So I, I always have a few spares just in case. So how does the banana look like for the Germany tours right now? I mean, it's just a very haggard, one of my, um, just a plain black bandana that's been with me for a very long time. And... I don't know. It, that's very it has a lot of it has a lot of magic in it, so that's why it's coming out for Germany. Ah, nice. Yeah, Germany always gets the magic, no doubt. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, thank you very much. That were all my questions. Thank you well, very much. Truly, thank you so much for giving me the time and uh, letting me <laughs> just ramble on for a very long time. But I don't know. It's very and important. It's, it's a blast on the tour. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the time. Have a nice day. Bye bye.